Welcome, friends. Uh, Sung Chim and I are here with uh, Bill and Christy Galtier, and we're just going to share a little bit of how we met them. I mean, they're like credentialed and all that good stuff, and they've done their homework. But what's most important uh, that Sung Chim and I want to convey is the relational way that we met. And I could share a lot, but I remember uh, seeing you, Bill, at um, some events, some Spiritual Formation Alliance events. I don't even remember how long ago, but uh, I'm like, oh, I, I like this guy. And then I think it went deeper when I went on a um, sabbatical and I was asking Bill about that. And then he gave some resources, led a few of us pastors at a retreat. And then it just blossomed into a friendship. And we, Sung Shim and I consider you guys friends, mentors, and just husband and wife team seeking to live in Christ and with all the gifts and strengths that you have. And so it's an honor just to see you model that kind of life and we can imitate you as you follow Christ. So it's my honor to be here and I'm going to let Sung Shim kind of share how she met and the beautiful things about you guys. Yeah. Thank you, John. Yeah, definitely. I think I met uh, Bill through you, John. But I think you said it, I agree with everything you said, but I think the word that I want to resonate with imitate, you are both human being that I want to imitate, you know, personally and professionally, but above all, as a follower of Christ. So that means so much, in, especially in my culture, the concept of master, like imitating somebody who's seasoned especially in Eastern culture, like my culture, Korea, that's very highly valued in here. So when I saw you guys as a couple relating to each other, the way that Bill and Christy, you pray when we met with you at a vulnerable times. See, I'm already crying. <laughs> hey, we have a whole podcast to do. <laughs> uh, so I think <clears throat> just the presence of God is felt in your presence. Mm. So then mm. I personally see both of you as somebody I want to imitate, mm. copy, and mm. hopefully that becomes my own flavor. Yeah. So then that's who you are to us. And it is, um, we have very small group of people that we can imitate. And so it is, that's just how we see life. So it's, it's our honor to be so close. I mean, we're in different cities, not that far, but, and yeah, Sung Shim reminded me of um, crucial moments like sabbatical and then uh, the transition from paid pastor to non-paid pastor. So key moments that you guys were there just present in those moments and they are indelible in our hearts and our minds. And, and even before we started like this, um, we were laughing, the four of us just catching up and laughing and we wanna bring that joy. And so, um, you, we're, we're here because we're friends. And also, Bill, I know you have been working on a book and then together you are sharing something that's been on your heart for a long time that I know you've been living out. So, so just share a little bit, just give a little history that you sense the spirit wants to highlight for our community, your community. And because I think you guys are worth getting to know on your website, in your training. I have so many friends Mm -hmm. that I either know that I sent to you or that I hear, oh, I, I went to their uh, training, their workshop, their, I'm doing their course. So I love it. It's, it brings such a common language and a delight. So, so what would you like to share that's been on your heart, your history? Go with the flow. Thank, thanks. Thanks for those words. It's just a, a joy to do life with uh, the two of you and have Jesus in, in the middle of that. And uh, what we especially love about you, John and Sung Shin, is that you're uh, serving Jesus together and that you're, you're doing your, your ministry of practice and presence and manual journaling and counseling, and you're, you're doing that in God's presence together so that people can not only experience your differing gifts and differing cultures, but even your relationship, and they, they can learn from your relationship. And that's uh, the powerful thing for Christy and me, because, you know, God is a relationship, and he sent the disciples out in pairs, and so... And that's how we wrote our book, Journey to the Soul. We, we wrote it together as co-authors. 
Um, Bill asked me to write this with him and that was intimidating for me. I don't like to write, <laughs> I like to speak. But it was just so compelling to make this message available to people because it has really come out of our own life and our, our work of, of journeying with others like the two of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Christy, I'm glad you said yes, because I mean, I know writing for writers is not easy, but writing for people who don't have that, like, I'm glad that both of you are on that journey and writing together has its journey in itself. So yeah, yeah. You, you get the rich rewards from your hard work. Yeah, when I read that book, Christy, I really personally appreciate it. We need a voice of woman. Personally, like when you are yeah, the stories that I want people to read, it's just so inviting and drawing. Mm -hmm. And then I love Bill's writing. At the same time, when I got to your portion, it's just like there is something about it right away intimate. Mm -hmm. Like just mm -hmm. you got me kind of that sense of it. Mm -hmm. So I am so glad that you say yes as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's such a big part of the, the journey that we all have with Jesus is our our emotions and the, the, the intimate feelings that maybe were are tender and uh, insecure sometimes uh, when and it's hard for us to articulate but everybody longs to be able to share their, their inner heart and, and be understood and not be alone and be validated be, be seen be heard be wanted feel, feel accepted and significant and so that's something that we really do in the journey of the soul book is we we integrate feelings and faith because a lot of times they're they're put separate, like they're they don't um, like they're in conflict. And many of us have, have grown up in context, whether it's in church or the Christian books and podcasts and the different places that we're or even in our families. But we're we're taught to you know to think, uh, to believe, to and, and it's important that we we think and and uh, renew our minds in Scripture is is super important. But it's not the whole thing. And so sometimes the the Christian message comes across to us like, okay, believe and do. Believe the, the, the right doctrines and, and the Bible and good things, and then now go do them. Mm -hmm. And there's like so much more to human personality than that. And in the middle of that is our emotions and our relationships and, and our habits. And so we help people understand all of that as it relates to the, the stages of faith. Mm. It is you right. You you begin to get more in tune with what God's really doing, what He's asking you to do, and how you're cooperating with Him. And what you thought maybe was your message, actually, you find out isn't the message that you thought because you discover God's message through you. So mm -hmm. that's been exciting for me in this writing process. It was exciting for Christy, but it was hell for me. <laughs> 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 Wait, which part, Bill? <laughs> the discovery process. Oh. So, in, in yes. the Journey of the Soul book, I rewrote every chapter three times. Oh my uh, gosh! Interviewing Christy, getting her stories, getting her feedback, and then you know, together with her, rewriting it, taking it apart, and redoing it because we got to get the cookies down to the lower shelf. And wow. So more stories more practical points, more heart engagement, oh. simpler words, because this book is, is based on, I don't know if you noticed in, in the end notes, but there's like 300 end notes in the book. And I'm, I'm looking at all these books on my shelf that we have read. And I'm thinking about 70,000 hours that Christy and I have spent as therapists and spiritual directors in the pool of pain with people. I mean, 70,000 hours, that's a lot of time. And so that's like our and all those books, that's our education. Yeah. So we, we've got material that is significant and robust for, for pastors and counselors and spiritual directors and, and people who think and study and, and really want to uh, be uh, robust. Mm. But we put the cookies down to the lower shelf so that anybody that wants to follow Jesus and to understand these stages of faith with their emotional and spiritual dynamics, they can relate to that. And then the other thing we were really uh, vigilant about is for all of these stages, we call them the, the Christ stages of faith, mm -hmm. six different stages with the wall in the middle. For, for each of those stages and, and their, their um, emotional dynamics, the needs, the temptations, the challenges, the spiritual disciplines that are helpful, for each of these stages, we celebrate each one. Instead of the comparison or I'm better if I'm you know at, at a further along stage or or gee, I don't, that person's not really following Jesus like I am. I don't think they're good. I don't think they're in with God in the right way. Instead of 
judging and distrusting each other when we're at different stages, mm-hmm. just calibrate those differences and to really uh, understand the differences and empathize with the particular needs and challenges at each stage. And so that's what I'm most excited about with this book is as we wrote it, I realized the Lord kept increasing the vision for mm-hmm. this book of what he could do in his church to really help us understand each other. And really, this could be a great tool for unity in the church. And the other reason why we wrote this book was as we were feeling God call the call to write, and as we were sitting down to talk to the publisher mm-hmm. and our acquisitions editor, I said, well, this is the book I need to mm-hmm. hand to people that keep coming to see me, that keep coming to meet with me. This is what they need. And so that was also the reason for writing this book. Yeah, and what is interesting is I don't think uh, most churches have or leaders articulate uh, stages of faith development or spiritual development. And so I, I would be curious what you've seen is, you know, what, what are, what is the de facto functional stages of development of most churches? And then what are you inviting people into from the history of the church and your own experience? Because I think that is something that is lost because, well, then we just know people burn out and, and they're done. So, uh, but that's my question is, what do you see the de facto stages of faith? And what's the wisdom you've gleaned? That's such a, a great question, John. Yeah, so in uh, most churches, what we're good at is uh, helping people come to trust in Jesus as their Savior and their Lord, to confess their sins or receive forgiveness and, and to begin a new life with God through Jesus. And, uh, and then we call that uh, confidence in Christ. That's the C stage. And then our churches are real good at helping people from the C stage into the H stage in the Christ stages. And that's help and discipleship. And so we help them join a small group. We teach them how to worship God, you know, gathering in community, study, study the Bible, uh, confess our sins and uh, be, be connected and, you know, beginning to learn some spiritual disciplines and, and grow and, and, Often that's that's an exciting time. Uh, now there's trials too, and so we help people with that. And then we come into the R stage of responsibilities in ministry, and that's where we're beginning to really discover our spiritual gifts and the uniqueness of those gifts and using them in the church. And it's like, wow, I I can I can serve in my church. I can help people. I can I can make a difference. And whether it's serving in the children's ministry or, or the parking lot or greeting people or leading a small group or whatever, going on a mission trip. But there's so many different ways within the body of Christ that we can join together to serve God, you know, each putting our differing gifts and abilities and resources together. And so most of the, the Christian scene in our churches today is the C, H, and R stages. And that's what our Churches are really good at helping people take those steps, and it's it's so important. But that's where we we tend to break down because in that R stage, like you said, John, we tend to overdo our 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 work, our ministry, whether it's uh, serving as, as that small group leader, being a parent of young kids, uh, going out on mission trips, serving in in the inner city with people from the church, or however I'm volunteering in my church, we we tend to overdo it. And we're, we're, we're earnest about it and we're, we're, we're working for God. And so we, we're depending we, upon our own strength too much though. Mm. And that's the big difference, right? We're, we're working for God, but we're not so much knowing how to work with God. We might have that conceptual understanding, but not the habits. And so because we tend to be self-reliant in the R stage, and we, life starts to break down. Suffering happens, uh, faith crises happen, prayers that don't get answered, compassion fatigue, or burnout. And so we hit this wall. And, and then at the wall, what we, what we almost all do is we try to go back to the way it was before. We try to go back to the disciplines and the, and the activities and the things that brought us consolation before. We try to go back to that and, and, and feel like we used to feel. And what used to work before doesn't work the same way in this new season of the soul. Mm-hmm. So the, the big thing that our book Journey of the Soul does is it, it turns the light on for people uh, on their path of life by giving them a map that says, you are here. Mm-hmm. You know, when you go to a mall or something, you know, you get that red star on the map, says, you know, you are here. Once you know you are here, okay, now I know how to get to there and to there. 
And so we give people a language for these different stages. And so mm -hmm. really the biggest takeaway is that when you're at that wall, it, this is not like, uh, it doesn't have to be in, in an endlessly stuck place in a place of discouragement. And because some people find that they're just destined to forever live where they're just, they're serving God and other people are getting fed and blessed yeah. through their, through their gifts and through God using them. Yeah. But the only blessing they're getting for the most part is mm -hmm. drinking the splashback of mm -hmm. all the living waters that flow out of them to other people, but oh. they're not really drinking it for themselves because they haven't learned how to do that. And so mm -hmm. we give them uh, a map that says, okay, when you're at the wall, this is actually a sovereign work of the Lord to invite you into the I stage mm -hmm. of the inner journey. Mm -hmm. So in the, in the Christ stages, when we come to the other side of the wall, we do this inner journey work. And the inner journey has to do with discovering more, we're doing this and we talk about getting a shovel and, and digging, digging in mm -hmm. the underlying emotions and needs that we maybe haven't been wanting to feel because they're stressful or painful. And as we do that, it helps to open up a new intimacy with Jesus that can be really sweet and powerful now, but it's take, it's a process because there's some pain there and there's some questions that aren't being answered and there's waiting and it, and it takes some time. But as we do the, the soul deepening work, we can begin to come to life again. Mm -hmm. So we're just, we're letting that wall prompt the inner journey. And then that can propel us now into the second half of the Christ stages, mm -hmm. the S stage of spirit led ministry and the T stage of transforming union. Mm -hmm. And how quickly can we get there? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things that we, we love that about this model is that really it's the Holy Spirit is our good shepherd leading us down the path. Mm. And one of the things that he illuminates for us as we come and grow in this understanding of this map is we begin to see our story in his story. Mm -hmm. we're not alone it's not all up to us we're not just this pilgrim out there sludging the way <laughs> sometimes we might feel like it because we might actually start depending upon ourselves and forgetting that he's there and leading us but as we reorient his presence and we get this vision from the lord what he's inviting us into that's really ignites us in our growth and then we're we're, we're taking the models from the past john that you asked about We've got, you know, Fowler's stages. We've got all these psychological stages and then highly researched, highly validated. And then we've got the spiritual models too, like Teresa and her mansion. And you know what? It's all God's truth and it integrates beautifully. And it integrates beautifully with our experience in our yeah. own life personally that we share. Yeah. And it integrates beautifully with the lives of those we've journeyed with and the therapy office and the spiritual directors. Well, I'm so glad that you um, bring it because... We, and you know, if you've studied, you've been in seminary or you're on this journey, you know that there is uh, wisdom out there and you're bringing it for our day and age in your way. And I think it's going to be awesome impact. And I'm even thinking about like my brain is going in like lots of potential directions. And I'm thinking about the leaders in church who go through this journey and then the individuals who are maybe it's like a core member because so I don't know which direction to go, but I'm thinking, because I think you deal with a lot of pastors, the system, how does it work with the individual pastor who maybe have a position of power, but the system is not, is the system on the journey? Or <laughs> how does that work, that dynamic? You know, you, 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 you deal with it and you, you see the, so sometimes the system spits out the, the pastor who's on the inner journey. So we talk about that dynamic because those are the people I care a lot about. I have a personal like um, affection for that transition. And that's a tough journey that I think you are shining light on and hope for. So can you speak to that? Thank you. That's so important. And, you know, so many of the people that have come to us that I wanted to be able to hand this book to come because they feel like either they've been hurt by the church or they feel like it's not working for me anymore and I'm not wanting to go anymore. And that's a problem because I'm on staff or, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, some of what you're talking about is because often because of this, the system doesn't understand. And they they now are in a position where they're serving the system and not the Lord anymore. Mm -hmm. And where, you know, organizations don't have a soul and they eat our soul. They consume our soul, they'll destroy our soul. And so we need to wake up to that. And sometimes that's a painful wake up. And so part of what, we in the book i think that that person that you have the heart for that you resonate with 
you know, I remember C.S. Lewis, the student saying, we read to know we're not alone. Mm. And I think that's part of reading this book will help that person to realize, oh, I'm not alone. It, it just, it frees us from shame because we recognize, oh, this isn't just, I'm not alone with this. I'm not the only one feeling this. I'm not bad. It's because we tend to turn on ourselves if you're in that position and feel like I must be doing something wrong. The problem must be me. Mm. And we don't understand, or we flip back and forth between blaming the system mm -hmm. and then blaming ourselves and go back and forth between shame or anger and blame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Neither, neither are helpful. Both keep us stuck. Yeah. Thank you for your, your sweet tenderness <laughs> that you bring to that. That's like beautiful. So what's your, okay, okay no, go ahead, hon. John talked a lot. Oh, I know, wow, I know. That's, you're no, usually no, the no, teacher. Good question. No, no, no. Thank you, hon. Thank okay, you, and the teacher of me wanting to kind of take a moment to articulate Christ's model, because mm. I really like the um, brilliancy of it. Like what you said, Christy, it's a really good integration of it. Like this psychological model, mm. but also this spiritual teacher. Yeah. So then you came up with this C-H-R-I-S-T. So I thought, oh my gosh, when I, like, mm. I didn't know what's in there. When I open it, the journey of your soul, but then inside there's a step-by-step, -step, the Christ. And I was just, there's something about that, even the name Christ, mm -hmm. like, grounds us mm, so yeah. the chr like you say mm. bill doesn't need to be thrown out like that's what you are talking mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. both so i don't need to take uh my original uh, intention to something else i just want for the audience mm. to understand this simply this sequence it's easy for people to actually understand c is you saying confidence in Jesus mm -hmm. or confidence in God in you know, his love mm -hmm. and then H is helping community mm -hmm. now you grow right and and then R is responsibility in ministry and then that's where they're kind of at the end of it we experience this almost in your book you're saying uh, necessary suffering like it's something that we cannot avoid mm -hmm. like I think we all work hard to avoid that experience but he yeah. said name it so I really like this model are and then at the end naming the reality because i think a lot of people that i mm. see suffer mm -hmm. from the fact mm. that whatever the hardship that they are experiencing at the stage of r at the end of it or whatever that is but they cannot name it i thought that this is it this is my mm. destination now i have to thrive and really see the people grow and also being fed just mutually satisfying mm. but when it is not there now I'm lost. I'm mm -hmm. in darkness. But you are naming the reality to tame it. Almost like not only tame it, you see, help us to see it as an invitation. Yeah. So the R and then the responsibility in ministry and then there's a wall and then now invited into an inner journey. Yes. And that was I, right? Mm -hmm. And then S, then spirit led mm -hmm. ministry. And then at the end, end with letter T and transforming uh, union and I thought this is worth of us naming it again mm -hmm. like uh, just step by step so that people like uh, listen to this oh that's Christ mm -hmm. and that we don't need to throw any step that mm -hmm. we just mm -hmm. welcome all and then naming where I am and celebrate and also just uh, being invited to see mm -hmm. what God has for us so that that's it what, what a beautiful a summary <laughs> It's, and it's so fun to, uh, for Chris and I uh, to experience your your interaction. And I, I love what you did there, Sunshine, when you uh, gently interrupted John. Because I tell Chris all the time, you know, you need to interrupt me because I talk I talk a lot with a lot of energy. So, <laughs> and see, now we're we're getting to learn from your relationship. Oh and, yeah, oh yeah. No, that's, and I wish the people listening on the audio. Um, I'm smiling so big when Sungshim did that because like on multiple levels, she interrupted, which I mean, that's a relationship. And then she summarized what Bill said, which is what is her gift. And yeah. I, I don't do that, but I know people are blessed by it. Yes. Right, yeah, right, right. Because probably Bill and Christy, they live through it. So then they say Christ and they already know it but then the people who heard for the first time they want to know okay the c h r yeah. like in their mind i want them to see it like what's wrong with that 
<laughs> I said and we, we want it to be memorable because if you just give the stages numbers, I mean that that's fine, but you forget what's yeah. what. And so to, to we work real hard to get uh, names that identify each stage. And we in the book we've got pictorial symbols for each stage, just to try to and, and we if uh, people go to journeythesoul.org, not only can they get the book, but we've got a leader guide for small groups that I, I personally wrote that to make it real. Simple, step-by-step, step. we do a six-week group. We've got a uh, sermon series outlines and a graphics package so that a pastor can lead their whole church. Mm. We've got something really fun that we call a uh, journey of the soul, soul talk cards. This is a, a deck of cards, a deck of playing cards. Mm. And each one goes through a different stage. There's eight cards for each mm. of the six stages plus the wall. And they each, each card just gives you one simple Bible verse that comes from that stage, and then a soul talk question so that with your friend or your small group or even your own devotions, you can just flip a card and then meditate on that Bible verse, comment on it, or and then just respond to the soul talk question. Now you're getting to know each other better, you're connecting with God, and, and, and you're having fun learning the stages better. And so all that's on journeythesoul.org, and the point of that is just to make it really simple for people like you were saying something about you know step by step you know we go through each stage step by step and it goes you know it's not it's not even we, we think mm -hmm. step forward step backward and you know and, and we revisit stages and so this is not a a boxy model it's, it's not linear yeah it's more of a circle we, mm -hmm. we, we revisit stages and really the ultimate in growth is to kind of have all those stages in you and mm -hmm. to celebrate all of them and one of the another fun way that we help uh, the readers do that is we created Spotify playlists. So if you go into Spotify, you search under Soul Shepherding or Journey of the Soul, you're going to get a playlist of contemporary Christian music songs, 30 to 50 songs for each stage. Wow. And this was so fun for Christy and me to go through this. And we like have this incredibly renewed appreciation mm -hmm. for the Christian artists in our world. People of all colors and types creating the lyrics and, mm -hmm. and the songs, not even knowing the stages, but just intuitively mm -hmm. as good spiritual poets and, and intercessors. So many of these songs are describing the different experiences and challenges and opportunities of each stage. Mm -hmm. So we group those songs for each stage. So that's like another fun way to, to, to yeah. learn the stages. And even many of the songs, even their, their, like their beat and their rhythm mm -hmm. expresses the energy of that stage. Mm -hmm. Wow. I want to be like you guys. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, your, your creativity. And it's like, I have like glimpses of that on the horizon for us and what we're doing. Just different life stage and different gifts. But I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Oh, I love that. I'm totally, that's great. And so I'm so glad you shared it. Go ahead. Well, yeah, what I want to the Lord, because he <laughs> really helped us take all of this knowledge and experience he's given us and make it really simple and memorable so mm. that he, so we could all understand where we are. And as we understand where we are, we're able to really participate with the empathy that the Lord has for us in our experience. Yes. And then we can understand other people that are in a different state mm -hmm. and have empathy for them. Yes. And what is difficult for them and what's the invitation for them and where can we see God active in their life in that stage? And where are they under temptation in that stage? Because each stage has different temptations and different oh, yeah. You know, different invitations mm. and different things that, that the Lord is actually going to use to bring us greater connection and intimacy mm. with Him. That's awesome. And you were going to say something? Yeah, what was what I was about to say to the audience or the listener mm. is that I want people to really trust the presence of generosity and goodness in God, which is reflected in your book mm. and what you just shared mm. in terms of resources. I know I feel a little embarrassed to admit still it's hard for me to trust the presence of prevailing presence of goodness in the world like mm. maybe I can mm. trust mm. that God will do that to me but as we all know that God do it through his people like you and Christy so when you take time to kind of share this is what we mm. did we provide resources and sometimes it's sometimes it's hard to believe oh my god you work that many hours to put all your life mm. knowledge into those, like like you say, lower bottom shelf or something, that level. Mm. 
but sometimes it's hard for people mm. to trust. Is it real? And I think almost that I had that struggle. I'm sure I still do have that, but I want people to hear your sharing right now and really pause and it's, it's not that high risk, really go check it out mm. and buy the book, but it's not like a thousands of dollars you need to spend. Just take that moment of almost, maybe there is really the glimpse of mm. God's goodness still prevailing, overcoming the evil. Mm. So that's what actually stood out to me mm. when I hear mm. you, Bill, unfolding all the resources, mm. including the music that you come combine together. Mm. So that's my heart. I want those who mm. listen or read this book or get to know your resources mm. really will tap into the reservoir of goodness of mm. God still at work and prevailing. Mm. Well, yeah, thank you for saying yes. that. Uh, you know, we have a whole team of people helping us uh, in our ministry. So uh, the Journey of the Soul book is not owned by Bill and Christy Galtier. We don't get royalties from it. That all goes to soul shepherding. And I mean, of course, indirectly, our ministry pays us, but we're, we're like missionaries. We, we mm. make a pastor's salary and we, we minister to people. Mm. Uh, so we're, we're free agents that the Lord deploys. And one of the, one of the projects we got to work on is, is putting this book together. And so, yeah, our heart is just to help people with it. So the Spotify playlist, you know, that's free. The, uh, we've also got videos, six, six videos professionally produced by Christy and me, one for each of the six weeks in the small group that unpack the book. That's free on journeythesoul.org. All the sermon series, graphics and, and outlines, all that's free. And we have, you know, the, the book and the leader guide and the journey of the soul, soul talk cards. We have as, as cheap as we can get them for people. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing a pot. We're started podcasts already on, on the book and those are all free. So, you know, we really just want to, in fact, we even have investors that are helping us give the book away to pastors and missionaries and church planners, especially those like that are in, you know, other countries and they don't have a lot of money and resources. Mm -hmm. So if we view it as, as a tool to, to bless people. And we do in our ministry, we do focus on pastors. And yet what we've been telling pastors is, you know, actually, we didn't write this book for you. We wrote it for your people. Mm. You'll be blessed, too. Yes. But most of all, we're writing this for your people because they, they need you to understand them in the different stages and they need to understand where they are. And yeah. so we, we want to come alongside you and help you in your ministry as a small group leader, as a spiritual director, however you're serving, even as a soul friend. We all have people in our life that we care about and we want to help them understand what God is up to in their life. Well, Journey of the Soul will show them. Mm. Beautiful. It is beautiful. And, and as you share that, I'm thinking if the church in, at large and then specific churches, if they could be, whoever leads it, be blessed or be a blessing for the different stages. Because I know to be a senior pastor or like lead pastors, you have to run the system and but if there's space in their framework that there are people in different stages that will play different roles and there might be maybe at the later end of the like multi-generational stage they they could have groups or just share their life and because they tend to be a little bit more at that end when you enter the wall and you go to the inner transformative experience like, can that just be, that space be held as there's like pastors of various sites, small and large churches, they're in charge of managing it and being good communicator and they honor, hey, I know there's people in different stages. I bless you, whatever stage you are. Yeah, see, that's so good, John. It gets back to the question you asked a few minutes ago, just your heart for the church, you know, you've been a pastor for a long time. And, and you understand the, the uh, stresses and challenges and opportunities of, mm -hmm. of church ministry. And so you were asking about, you know, it's difficult to uh, sort of uh, help the system to change because mm -hmm. we, we kind of end up looping through CHR walls, CHR wall. And, and <laughs> unfortunately, people leave the church. To, mm -hmm. yeah. They go somewhere else to find yeah. inner journey spirituality yeah. and spirit-led ministry and transforming union. And, and so our book is trying to address that issue. And because we've got people on either side of the wall are like two totally different personalities, mm -hmm. mindsets, and even cultures. 
Yeah. These are two different spiritualities. And so many of the conflicts that we have in our churches and our family, even in our societies, we've had so much conflict in uh, 2020. Yeah. Uh, so many divisive issues and, and even with, within our churches and families as, as Christians even. And it's so much it's because we don't, we don't understand the um, one another's experiences. We're not having empathy for each other and we don't have language to talk about the differences. And so we, we, we address the, the first half and the second half of the journey and how these are like, feel like they're miles apart. And so getting, getting words to understand, okay, so if you're in the first half, you're, you're sort of uh, probably younger in your, in your mindset and tending towards sort of black and white thinking and kind of the, the all or nones and really, you know, A leads to B leads to C and you, you sort of want a world that's the Proverbs life of, you know, I sow a good seed and I, and I, and I reap a good harvest. And but then it doesn't always work that way. Like you were saying, some human. So there's sufferings that come along and prayers that seem like they're not being answered and questions that we have that are so painful. And so we're, we're hitting this wall or it's maybe just a, a wall of exhaustion. And so a lot of people sadly don't, don't get through that wall because they don't, they don't understand it. They don't have language for it. They don't see the map and they don't have a friend. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a huge part of Journey of the Soul is finding a soul friend and reading it together, reading it in small groups, reading with a prayer partner, sharing with each other, praying for each other, because we're, we experience God's presence and, and we grow in grace, not only through reading the Bible, but we, through relationships with people. And so we need to share our stories and we need to receive empathy. We need to give empathy. And so then that helps us come into the second half of the journey where our, our, we're a lot more open-minded to things. We're, we're not as prone to legalism we're not as prone to judging people or comparing or putting people in boxes we're, we're way more grace giving and unconditional in our love and, and we bias towards even with someone we disagree with we bias towards well i want to listen tell me tell me about your your thoughts there tell me about your experience and we listen for the emotions and for the needs and we do that with jesus and we see the good in people and but but learning how to still hold on to the centrality of, of Jesus Christ and the, the grounding in the word of God that is inspired by the Lord. Because some people lose that as they get into that second half, they sort of go new age. And that has people in the first half like, oh, I don't trust that. That's not like really Christian. And so that just furthers that divide. And so we're trying to unite and integrate, help people see the, the good in all of the stages and, and see the, the general progression that the Lord wants to lead us in because this helps us in our life experience. It helps us to grow. Mm. Mm. But, and that sounds like a linear model because mm. there is, you know, C-H-R-I-S-T and there are some benefits to moving along through the stages as the spirit of Jesus leads us. But the reason why it's not a linear model is because Jesus gave us one bottom line for our life, the great commandment. Mm. And I always like to say the great commandment is a great relief. Mm. Because there are so many standards that I can put on Bill. So, so many expectations I can have for myself to be a better Christian. Mm -hmm. and, and there are a lot of teachings in the Bible. And depending on how you interpret it, you might interpret there to be a lot of rules and commands in there. I, I don't see it that way. We got 10 commands and what, those are unpacked for us. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus says, yeah, amen. And let me distill it to one mm -hmm. with two sides. And yeah. he gives us the greatest commandment that we would love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourself. And he says, that's the whole law. That's the whole thing. Mm. And he says that, you know, in different ways throughout his teaching, like, like the golden rule, you know, do for others as you would have them do for you, which is really a teaching on empathy. Mm. And what it really means is pay attention to what other people feel, what they're struggling with, what their mm -hmm. sins are and their hurts and, and, and understand them, love them where they are, and then do for them what you would want if, if you were experiencing that. But mm. that's the same, that's really like that love your neighbor as yourself. And so he's giving us that same sort of a command. And so at any stage, in any of these Christ stages, mm. the first Christ stage, the last stage of transforming union, we can love God and our neighbor well. And that's the one measurement that God has for us. Yeah. And even in that measurement, it's like, overflowing grace right because love god what does that mean yeah. uh get close to the source of kindness and mercy <laughs> the yeah. one with all the power is gentle it's like who doesn't want to come in under the wing of the lord it's like mm -hmm. there's refuge there for me there's there's blessing and grace there so loving god is like is blessing me 
and then love your neighbor as yourself. Well, you know, as yourself, as God is loving me, I can overflow with that. And as, and as God loves me through other people or through nature or through my, my life situations, I can now overflow with that to yeah. other people. Yep. That's so beautiful. Like, I feel like, um, you know, like the, the energy came out and you are like it, engaged in that. And I love it. It's so good. It's so simple. We need the reminder and the truth. And there's two questions I think I will ask. I have like way more. I'm trying to distill it down. But I want to just say this, the way you describe the stages and the church and leaders and the people in the, the different sort of like halves, I think you guys are like bishops. I know that's not our language, your language. We don't use that, right? But I think the essence of the word is the leader of leaders and casting the vision and seeing like, oh, this, we can be the body of Christ like this. And that's just, that's what I see in you guys, that you are like the, the bishops of, you're, you have the heart, the heart to care for the whole of the church. And that's, and I've been blessed by that. And we've been blessed by that. And I hope the people listening are blessed by that. And I'm, thank God we have people like you at this stage with this wisdom and just genuine, authentic heart that you're sharing. Awesome. It's a privilege and an honor and a responsibility. And yes, we yes. We do it without being ourselves intimately connected with Jesus. Yeah. On him. Well, the, the, so the two questions, and we is because I know we know all know the Enneagram. And I'm sure, can you just make a comment or two on the Enneagram through the stages, like how you uh, in integrate it? And then what about married couples at different stages? Right? I'm sure that has its own dynamic and challenges. So um, could you wrap all that up in a couple of sentences? <laughs> but so you okay, can see. hold on. I noticed that you ask really good questions. Oh, okay. I, I find it very attractive. Very good. Very good. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, honey. Yeah, very good. Very, I didn't think about it. Oh, but yeah. anyway, I just wanted to make a comment. And when, Bill, when you were talking about the major one of all this even mm. Christ stages the the love I really mm. almost I wish that we end there because mm. of that is so good that's all that's all we need it's like that's the yeah. why I appreciate you guys work is always you point it to the mm. that target mm -hmm. soul shepherding has a lot of resources even mm. this book is really thick and just like a lot of information but I love that I mm. love that about it. It can be all summed in one sentence yeah. like that. So I really appreciate it. But since you have good questions, I'm curious too. But <laughs> I thought that that was a really good place. Well, thank you for so your good. appreciation, hon. I, I, I receive it. And <laughs> this is just real, like the four of us just being authentic. And so so there you well, guys go. Distill yeah. the, the gold and wisdom that you have for us from okay. those two, I guess, apparently good questions. Well, so. one of the things, yeah, we love the Enneagram. It's another tool that's been really helpful. And one of the things that's so helpful about it is it does give us a tool for empathy to understanding mm. people that are different than us. Mm. And so that's one of the ways that the Christ stage model is, is the same way. It's a tool mm. for empathy of understanding, of seeing how people in these different stages mm. view the world differently, mm -hmm. how they experience the world differently. And so there can be, there definitely can be a tension when married couples are in different stages because you are, you're, you're viewing the Lord differently. You're viewing mm -hmm. other Christians in the church differently. Your view of yourself and your interaction with your church or with other people or with the Lord, it looks a little different in each stage. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. by understanding the stages, it's a great tool for empathy and understanding and expanding our vision of this life with Christ and this relationship with Christ. So just like Bill is an Enneagram one, he's going to relate differently to his work than I do as an Enneagram two. Um, when he was in the inner journey stage and I was in responsibilities and ministry stage, there was tension there because mm -hmm. he was in the world differently than I was. And he was talking about God in some ways that were kind of scaring me. Mm -hmm. And like, is that biblical? And you know, <laughs> I didn't understand. Uh, and I feel this black and white thinking. And so that's where these stages can be really helpful in helping us understand because we tend to be afraid of what we don't understand. Right, right. Wow. Very good. You did amazing. <laughs> like you really did distill it in like <laughs> amazing. Like that's gold. Oh, that's good. Cool. Very good. Yeah, I thought it was very, yes, wow. well integrated there. Very good. 
But I thought maybe we need to wrap up. Of course. The reason is that I want always listen to, to your wife. <laughs> no, that's not yeah. I actually want like I wanted to listen to this like all the way, but just those who listen, I want them to enjoy it, be able to end it, have a satisfaction. It's just like a book. I cannot finish it, then it yeah. makes me not happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's yes. why yeah yeah no that, that those were the last two questions i mean of course we could have like multiple podcasts but i wanted to ask um if you could end it with a blessing a benediction a, mm -hmm. um just a, like a prayerful mm -hmm. word for the people listening yeah we'd love to do that and uh yeah uh, heavenly father jesus our lord and our friend Holy Spirit, closer than our breath. God, you are three in one and one in three. Community of love, and we can feel ourselves enfolded in your presence even now. Each of us listening, Lord, we just give you praise that you are God. Mm. And as the sovereign Lord, the creator, who flung the stars in the sky and called them by name, you are also kind and tender to each one of us. And I, I know, Lord, there are some listeners that are, they're, they're feeling like, well, I don't know if, I don't know where I am in this walk with Jesus. Uh, I'm struggling in my relationship with God. I'm having feelings I don't understand, uh, uh, questions. I, I feel alone or I, I'm not in a place that I'm compatible with my, my spouse or my friends. Oh, Spirit of Jesus, would you just touch that listener just touch them deeply right now in their heart and their mind and their soul even if they in their bodies if they could just feel the, the warmth of your smile you really are with them you're with each of us right where we are help us lord to have the lights turned on to see where we are in our journey with you to see that map to see that star that says you are here and to see that there is actually uh, good purposes and loving kindness in where we are now. If we, if we could have the eyes to see, if the veil could be lifted and we could see from the eternal perspective, see through the eyes of Jesus, we could see, God, that you're doing a work of grace in our life right now. In this time of, of desolation and distress could actually be prompting us deeper and forward into a renewed relationship with you that would be far beyond what we ever could have hoped for or imagined. Let that be true, Lord, for each person hearing the sound of my voice now. Thank you, Lord, that these prayers are, are activating souls to hope, activating us to hope in your goodness, Lord, and to reach out our hand and hold it up and meet with the hand of heaven that reaches down the hand of grace. I am not alone. Jesus has walked this path step by step with Jesus. I can come into this abundant life that you've promised us, and I can partner with you, Lord, to do your work, to love other people as you do, and just discover the greatest dignity and the greatest joy. Thank you, Lord. And we just pray your blessings on practice and presence and John and Sungshin Wap now, I know everyone listening so appreciates them, the friends and mentors and teachers that they are individually and collectively, the counselors that they are, and that they point to you, Jesus, you're the wonderful counselor. So we thank you, we celebrate you in everything. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Bill and Christy. Uh, listeners, check out their website, full of like goodness and reveals God's good. So read the book. It's really good. Yes. Journeythesoul.org. Yep. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless, bless you, Bill and Christy. And we love you all. We love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.